After you log in, the first thing you might want to do is click on the Markets menu in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Our screener supports a global universe of publicly traded companies, and many traders are only interested in specific markets. So for the purpose of this example, we're going to limit our scope to exchange-traded U.S. companies on the American, New York, and NASDAQ stock exchanges. So we'll save those selections. You can see the total universe of companies we're screening against in this case is a little over 6,000 companies. So if you were to click the Quick Start button, you'll see a combination of pre-built screens in the tool. Uh, shared screens that other users have shared with the community, as well as screens in my personal account. Screens like profitable growing companies near net current asset value, e enterprise value to EBITDA, and enterprise value free cash flow with manageable debt. And let's actually load this screen to get an example of what these screens look like. The first thing you may notice here is how responsive the screener is. It updates very quickly, and it's very easy to iterate with screens using this tool. So we see in this uh, case, no matter which universe of exchanges you had selected, as long as it includes U.S. exchanges, we're narrowing the scope to only look at those US exchanges and we're using valuation metrics like enterprise value to free cash flow or enterprise value to EBITDA in our uh, screen that are pre-built metrics. We can also use custom formulas like looking at the total debt in the most recent financial statement and seeing how it compares to the annual EBITDA. In this case we're requiring that all companies have debt loads that are less than twice their annual EBITDA. Now, if we wanted to change the screen, so in this case, we already are limiting our scope by virtue of the markets uh, dialog. So we no longer need to include the requirement that it be US only or over the counter because that's already required in the markets uh, space. And let's say we were willing to be a little bit more liberal with our total debt threshold to say it's, uh, it has to be less than EBITDA times three. All you'd have to do is click on that line item, save it, and it'll me almost immediately update the screen with those new criteria. The other thing that's interesting about our screener is the views in both the screener view at the bottom as well as the watch list view in the upper right hand corner are fully customizable. If I were to right click on any of these column headers, I can move them left or right, remove them from the view if I'm so inclined. And I also have this columns menu where I can add any of those 1500 data points as uh, additional columns to uh, the view that we're looking at for all the screener results. There's also a freeform column criteria where I can set up my own uh, requirements um, and own custom formulas that will be reflected in the uh, screener view. So in this case, I'm going to look at to net tangible assets divided by market capitalization. I type in the formula, click on it. I'm going to make this uh, fit here, so I'm going to remove some additional columns just so everything can fit on one screen. A and then what I'm going to do is sort by my custom formula. So all I have to do is click on it, it sorts ascending, click on it again, it sorts descending, and I can see net tangible assets as a function of, or as divided by market capitalization. Now you may see some outliers here that are uh, companies that have unusually high um, net tangible assets to market capitalization. A number of these are Chinese uh, reverse merger companies that have questionable uh, data in their financials. You'll see a lot of these are Chinese companies. Um, so what we might want to do is add another additional condition that net tangible assets in the most recent statement divided by market capitalization has to be less than and we can say uh, 1.8 just as a cutoff that we want to use. Now because this screener is so responsive and it's so flexible, you can iterate in this fashion to create the screens that you're interested in. The other thing that's no notable here is you can download a page of results from your screener to Excel and it'll keep the format that you've established by customizing the view. So if you were to save this screen after having iterated with it, find a, a format that you like, click download to Excel, you can actually open the data in Excel, and it's opening in a window on another a screen here, but if I pull the screen over, what you'll see is that it has all the exact same columns, including the custom formula that you, you created in our screener. Now, the other thing that's pretty cool here is that if you click on Advanced Screener, it'll convert that basic screener condition that you created just with a very easy to use point and click and formula builder into an underlying SQL query. And this supports a very large subset of SQL uh, capabilities and will allow a database programmer to create even more complexity around the screens that can be saved for future use. So once you go through the iterative process of finding a screen that you like, you can save it, categorize it, and log into the tool again and download the view updated with new data that reflects the screen that you've spent time customizing.